Hello everyone, welcome to my series on A 2019 or Automation 360 Programming and today's topic is uh, Website Table Extraction or Traversing. So in this use case we are going to see how we can extract data out of a website table or how we can traverse the table online. So let's get started. Okay, so we are going to start with uh, searching for HTML tables in Google and let's click on the first link and we have a sample table over here so let's start by extracting the data out of this table and storing it in a variable in a2019 so we have this uh, blank task over here let me just start by searching for a counter capture application refresh the list and click on this drop down and choose HTML tables in Google Chrome and then click on capture object and we come to this page now if we point our mouse somewhere here so I'm not clicking on the mouse I'm just freely moving it and if you point our mouse on this part on this section you see that the header and data is getting captured now I've already shown this in my previous video how to capture uh, website tables and store them into data tables so we click on this and we can store the data into a data table by selecting the action get table so this is something that we have already done and we select our data table over here by creating a table let's say tbl website table and then we can loop through this table data table the same way we do for any uh, data table variable right now how do we what are the different ways of looping through the records of the table apart from uh, this uh, data table approach so let's first just uh, choose our properties we choose the tag which is table we choose the DOM path which is table ID customers and the HTML ID is customers let's just remove the other variables we don't need that what we have is sufficient and instead of choosing get table let's just say get cell text by index so you see here there are a lot of other properties over here a lot of other actions over here that we can perform on this table extract so we are going to do get cell text by index and then we have a row and we have a column both of these are string variables right but we need to traverse through the table so we have to increment the row we might have to increment the column as well so we cannot work with a string variable we need to have two numeric variables over here so what we're going to do is we're going to create two number variables one is rows and the other is columns and in this text box we're going to put dollar rows dot to string and dollar columns dot to string right so now we can just set the values in this row and column uh, variables and we can get the respective data out of the table so the output to this should be a string variable yes it should string variable let's just give it a prompt assignment and now let's just start a loop keep this inside the loop and let's run the loop for initially for 10 times uh, we'll come to that later on now within that 10 times what we're going to do is we're going to go for a number assign and increment the value of rows plus 1 and assign it to rows so we're going to start with the default value of 0 so click on rows and start with the default value of 0 right and when the loop runs the first thing is going to do is increment the row to 1 and assign to rows itself and we do the same thing for columns as well right and now let's just put a message box and display the prompt assignment value because if you remember in the record capture we had assigned the result to prompt assignment right so it's doing a get cell by index with this rows and columns that we are incrementing over here and then assigning the value to prompt assignment which we are doing a message box right here now there will be a time when there will be no more rows to capture right so we're going to come to that later on but let's just run the code now and see what happens
so it starts with company so if you click on the table if you go back to the website you see that company is the header so it means that it started the first row and the first cell so the first row first cell is the first header which is company and then it started with the data in the rows so why did it come come here because I think we made a mistake here we are incrementing the column as well right so if we go back to our code uh, I don't think the code is visible right now but uh, we are incrementing the row as well as the column so that's why in the second row it came to the second column now in the third row it will come to the third column which is Mexico so one two three third row third column is Mexico and now it should throw an error okay it's giving a blank value and keep on giving blank values because there are no more columns which can be incremented right now let's just go back and fix that uh, that was a mistake so let's not increment the column as of now and uh, let's just uh, assign let's just copy this and assign one to calls and en enable this so now we're going to talk about the first column only right so let's go back and run so now we're going to loop through the rows but our column still remains as one so we go with company and then the first name came is the second name third name fourth name fifth sixth and then we should have blank values so that's how we are traversing through the values in a table without actually bringing it to the data table right now there's one more way of doing the same thing let's say you want to capture uh, you don't want to capture the value of this but rather there is a link in this table that you want to click on so let me just go and change this uh, go to inspect element I'm just changing this value on the fly so uh, let me just put a right click on this edit as HTML and let me just put an anchor tag over here href equal to pound and then this so now if we close this you see that Germany is now a link and you click on Germany and it kind of refreshes the page right uh, we don't uh, we have actually not navigated to a different page so it stays on the same page but uh, it still is a link so now let's say the requirement is this entire third column values are actually links or so hyperlinks right and your requirement is to click on each of the links so in this kind of a scenario bringing the values to a data table or bringing the values to a single string element is not going to serve the purpose so how do we do that let's try that okay so in this case instead of capturing the entire table we are going to do a recapture and we are going to capture this link in the table right now if you check the domex path of this link let's just uh, take it out and bring it to a notepad for better visibility okay so if you see that let me just compare this with the website table now if you see that the table ID is TBL ID customers right here now inside the table there is a T body and then there is a TR and this is the second TR because the first TR is the header so the second TR is actually the first row of data so TR2 and then TD is the column so second row third column that's why td3 and we have added an anchor tag right inside the td so that's why it's showing a1 now if we had to click on each of these links in this column then we definitely have to increment the rows but our column remains fixed at 3 so this value this tr value is the one that we need to increment so what we do here is we still go ahead with the domex path we take the html tag and we can remove the other properties and in the action we'll just go with a left click since it's a link we can go with a cosmetic click now once again we're going to use our row variable so instead of this tr2 we'll remove the 2 from here and we're going to put our row variable right here rows dot to string and now our row value is going to get incremented inside our loop so let's just loop again for 10 times and put this inside and inside the loop let's just do a number assign and dollar rows 
plus 1 and give it to rows again and once again a number assigned at the top where our column value remains fixed at 3 this goes to columns so now the rows value is getting incremented the column is fixed at 3 and the record capture instead of capturing the entire table we are capturing one link in the table but our row is getting incremented right here and we are doing a left click so first it click here then it should click here then it should click the remaining rows the remaining values now this is going to throw an error why because we changed we introduced an anchor tag in the first cell we did not introduce any anchor tags in the next cell so it's not able to find anything after the first row and it should throw an error let's just see that Oh, it's not even running because on the first row itself, so if you remember, our data row is the second row. So in the first row itself, it was not able, it didn't, it couldn't find any link, right? It threw an error. So we, what we can do is we can uh, assign one to rows and the moment it enters the loop, it will get converted to two, even before the first click happens. Let's just see that. So it clicked on Germany and it's trying to find the same link on the next row which is row number 3 and it's not able to find that and it's going to throw an error. So what we have tried to show you here is a uh, approach of incrementing the uh, row counter and concatenating that value in the DOMX path string. Right? So this is used where you don't need to actually bring the data out of the table and store it to any variable and then use that variable. Right? You just need to work on that website table directly on the page. You need to interact with the table, maybe click or double click on the table directly on the page and this is how you can do that. So in this video we saw how to extract a table either using a data table approach or using the uh, row index and column index approach or you can traverse through a table directly on the page on the website itself and interact with the table, perform an action on the table. Just try it out yourself, this is very simple and if you face any issues let me know in the comment section, I will be happy to help you out. Thank you.